Nail biter of a game in New York on Tuesday. White Sox hung tough and beat the Yankees 3-2. Sevi Zavala carried the offense, and Lucas Giolito was outstanding, going six innings without giving up a hit. The Chicago White Sox are undefeated in June and are four and a half games back in the AL Central. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome back to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sox. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Just search Locked on White Sox. This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Uh, Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And when you enter promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler uh, with every order. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, uh, your team every day. Our Chicago White Sox take on the New York Yankees on Wednesday. Lance Lynn will be on the mound. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. How about those Southsiders? Wow, they are now 27 and 35, four and a half games back in the AL Central. Uh, beat the Yankees 3 2. Uh, Sebi and White Sox pitching. That was the story. Uh, Gia was outstanding. So was the bullpen. Uh, they bent, but they did not break. Uh, Hendricks uh, back. In his familiar role, uh, nine hitter Sebi Zavala with all three uh, RBIs. Uh, all the details later in this episode. Before I forget, I also want to thank uh, once again Jeff Cohen for coming on the previous episode, uh, talking all things Charlotte Knights. Uh, it was a, a sobering episode, but uh, still the reality is there. Uh, good to get the info from him. Uh, prior to Tuesday's game, White Sox sent Billy Hamilton to Charlotte on injury rehab assignment. Hamilton has been on uh, the injured list since May 10th, retro to May 4th with left hamstring strain. I, I kind of forgot about Billy Hamilton, to be honest with you. When I saw this news uh, Tuesday afternoon, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember uh, Billy Hamilton, the speedster. It was uh, He was going to save the season at one point earlier this year what happened to him well who knows we'll see maybe uh, if he can return add a spark to this White Sox team with his speed uh, if he gets healthy Uh, the Chicago Tribune a couple days ago uh, I think it was Paul Sullivan that had an article with uh, a bunch of White Sox Yankee moments maybe you saw this article uh, and there's a lot to pick from and one stood out in my mind uh, June 18th 2000. Uh, Boy, this was such a fun season, such a fun team. And I remember this moment that Sullivan was writing about. Uh, This was his blurb. Uh, The Sox scored nine first inning runs for the first time since 1962 in a 17-4 route of the Yankees, sweeping the four-game series and ending a road trip to Cleveland and New York with a 7-0 record. Uh, They moved seven and a half games ahead of Cleveland in the American League Central and route uh, to their first division title since 1993. Wow. Flashbacks. When I read that blurb, uh, I followed that team so closely. Such a fun group. Frank Thomas with one heck of a year. And I had tickets uh, in hand for the ALCS uh, in 2000, thinking, you know, they'd get past the Seattle Mariners and uh, uh, we'll see, you know, this will be exciting. And they just fell on their faces offensively. Uh, Frank Thomas did not 
Uh, he did not even show up, but uh, wonderful memory on that 2000 season. That was that 7-0 stretch was something else. Uh, here's Andy McCullough from The Athletic. Uh, he had a great article recently uh, talking about a bunch of different teams and what they might go through uh, leading up to the deadline. And to no surprise, uh, the Sox are mentioned. Uh, there was a question uh, to Andy, uh, where do you go from here if you are the White Sox? Uh, are we as fans destined for another run of uh, mediocre or worse seasons as we have become accustomed to? And that was from Rob F. in the article. And this is what uh, McCullough wrote up. Pretty interesting. In a sense, the rebuild worked. The White Sox built a core that included highly touted, highly talented players like Tim Anderson, Dylan Cease, uh, Lucas Giolito, Aloy Jimenez, Yoan Mancada, and Luis Robert Jr. Uh, all those players are still in uniform on the South side, but the group has been plagued by the collective nightmares of injuries and ineffectiveness, uh, pulling the team well beneath 500 at a time when the rest of the division looks quite weak. It would be difficult for owner Jerry Reinsdorf, executive vice president Ken Williams, and general manager Rick Hahn to admit defeat and start tearing down again. But it would also be difficult to look at this team and envision it contending for a World Series again. Too much has gone sideways since 2021. What would I do? Yeesh, it feels unfair to inflict another rebuild upon the fans, but it also feels like a dereliction of duty to not scout the trade market for offers. I would expect Giolito to get traded. He might be the best arm moved this summer. A reliever like Kendall Graveman should be available. Same with Anderson. The team's most exciting asset is Cease. But after finishing second in the Cy Young voting last year, Cease has struggled with his command and watched his strikeout rate tumble. Since he is under team control through 2025, the team may want to wait for his value to increase, but then the team runs the risk of Cease struggling even more, like so many of his teammates have done in recent years. The choice on all these players will be painful. It is hard to admit defeat, but sometimes it is necessary. Uh, it was a good read. He went through a bunch of other teams. Uh, I, the, the first line, though, of that blurb, in a sense, the rebuild worked. I mean, and if if you're counting just acquiring players, uh, a, a bunch of talent that you know were rated highly in, in prospect lists and all this other stuff, okay, you did that. But what do we have to show for it? We don't even have a, a series win in the playoffs to show for it. Just a couple of games that we have won. I mean, two games. So I, I don't agree with McCullough's statement uh, that, it, in a sense, it worked. Not at all. I mean, we have not gotten the results. So uh, interesting talking about Giolito. You know, he's kind of had, you know, on again, off again this season. He's put a couple starts together. And then, uh, you know, he had something like he did against the Angels, his previous start. But then on Tuesday, uh, he was electric. So uh, a, a good uh, a good read from McCullough in The Athletic. And then Daryl Van Scoven of the Sun-Times uh, had a nice uh, article leading into this Yankees series. So heading into Tuesday, uh, Sco Van Scoven wrote, at 26 and 35, they're in survival mode. Uh, White Sox treading water and trying to sustain something, anything. Uh, to re-engage fans who've watched them go 133 and 137 since Tim Anderson's walk-off homer against the Yankees in the Field of Dreams game in August 2021. Trading wins and losses will make it easy for the front office to decide what to do as the trade deadline approaches. Winning series in June against teams with winning records might see, might make it seem like this team is actually worth keeping. Ordinarily, this would be a month for the White Sox to try to play 500 baseball because of the hole they've dug. Uh, they'll instead need to demonstrate they're not as awful as they've seen by having a good month against good teams. Keeping in mind that the all-important September schedule begins with 16 games against division opponents. After that, the White Sox finish the season with the Nationals, Red Sox, Diamondbacks, and Padres. 133 and 137 
since that Field of Dreams game. Wow, when you put it like that, ouch, uh, absolutely ouch. Um, talking about on-base percentage, where at least uh, Pedro Grafol was, Sox are bottom of the entire league uh, in that category. Uh, after Sunday's win, uh, where they had four walks, this is what Grafol had to say, walks are really important. On-base percentage is really important. All that stuff creates havoc. It forces players to make tough pitches in tough situations. We drew those two walks, and we get in a couple of good counts, and now you have to throw pitches over the plate. Uh, this lineup that we've got, if we control the strike zone, we get good pitches to hit. We're capable of doing a lot of damage. Sacks were 29th in on-base percentage in all of baseball coming into Tuesday. They only walked once against the Yankees. Uh, Lucas Giolito was a man on a mission uh, if he could have only limited the pitches, but the bullpen held on, and Sebi Zavala added to his baseball resume. Uh, more on that in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, it's so easy to get caught up on what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from uh, yourself. But when we spend all our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched, thin, and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MLB. Our White Sox face off against the Yankees game two of the series on Wednesday. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Uh, Sox took care of business in the Bronx 3-2 on Tuesday. Entering Tuesday, according to Scott Merkin, White Sox were 2-11 and against American League East teams this season, uh, going 2-5 and at home, 0-6 oh, on the road. Uh, they have been outscored 94-49. to uh, Giolito was on the mound. Aaron Judge not in the lineup, not know, not knowing when we're going to see him again. Uh, Schmidt was on the mound for the Yankees. Close to zero experience against him uh, prior to Tuesday. So, uh, again, that could maybe contribute to what happened with the offense. Uh, again, when we uh, do not see a pitcher, when we see a pitcher that we've never seen before, I should say, uh, it is tough goings for the White Sox. Coming into Tuesday, White Sox, they hit two home runs over the previous four games. Jake Berger hit both of those, but was not in the lineup. This is what Grafol said on Berger. Just know that if he's not playing, that if it's Sheets or somebody else playing, that's a better matchup that particular day. Who doesn't want Berger in the lineup? I want him too. However, we only have nine spots, and it's really not nine spots because he can't catch play shortstop or center field. So there you go. Pedro Grifold. It almost feels like it's not his decision to put uh, one of the hottest hitting uh, players in a lineup. I mean, Jake Berger has been on fire, uh, getting better hitting righties, smashing lefties, had the walk off grand slam last time we saw the Sox uh, and he was not playing. So, uh, all's uh, uh, well that ends well, though. Uh, fast forward to the top of the third. Sebi Zavala uh, sat back on a breaking ball and hit a solo home run to the right field corner. Uh, Jason Benetti uh, talked about how that Zavala home run was probably a home run only at Yankee Stadium. One nothing socks. A uh, bottom of third, 35 pitches on Giolito's arm entering the inning, uh, working top of the zone with success on an 0 2 count to get a a leadoff strikeout. Uh, he was sitting 94, 95 miles an hour. Gio's slider very sharp against Stanton. Another strikeout in the inning. Uh, Gio line after three, zero hits, zero runs, a couple of walks, uh, three strikeouts, 45 pitches. Uh, top of four, Luis Robert Jr. led off with a single, and then Aloy Jimenez 
uh, hit into a 6-4-3 double play, so nothing going for the Sox. Uh, we'll hear about that again from Aloy later. Uh, bottom four, Giolito struck out the struck out the leadoff hitter again, and then Gio put a 95 mile per hour fastball on the lower inside corner to sit down Donaldson, a uh, two out walk to Volpe, uh, and then he stole second, but no harm, no foul on that. Calhoun grounded out to end the inning. Top of five entering the inning, Sacks with four hits, uh, zero walks. And one run off of that solo shot from Zavala. Uh, Andrew Vaughn with a hit down the third baseline. Josh Donaldson snagged it. And it looked like Donaldson just submitted to the fact uh, that he was not going to get uh, Andrew Vaughn. He just heaved it to first base, hoping it would find its way. Vaughn was out. He is very, very slow. But that's nothing new there. Uh, and then with two outs, wow, Sebi Zavala launched. Uh, his second home run of the game to deep left field, uh, three nothing sacks, bottom of five, a nice mix of location, speed, and eye levels from Giolito. Worked a lot of full counts, though. So he was at 83 pitches after five, but still had not given up a hit. Uh, last Giolito start was against the Angels. Uh, he did not last very long, and the White Sox offense bailed him out with seven runs. A much different situation on Tuesday. Uh, top of six, Aloy Jimenez into another double play. 5-4-3 this time. Uh, Sox went quietly. Uh, bottom six, hey, still working pretty quick uh, was Giolito. Getting ahead in the count, a uh, slider was very effective. Had Stanton 0-2. Let it go full. That was a bit of the problem for Giolito on Tuesday. He'd get ahead of the count, and then he would let uh, he would let head hitters catch up, so to speak. A lot of foul pitches too, uh, but he did strike out Stanton on a beautiful breaking ball, lower outside corner. I mean, he was hitting the corners uh, perfectly. A seventh strikeout, got a fly out to Robert to end the sixth. Gio still had that no hitter going, but was at 100 pitches. So not the first time he left a game with a no-no this season. Back in April, I think it was April 18th, uh, Giolito went six no-hit innings before uh, the pitch count got to him. First White Sox pitcher in history uh, to do that twice in a season. Uh, nothing for the Sox in the top of the seventh, which became a theme for a few innings. Uh, bottom seven, so Giolito was done. Uh, Joe Kelly entered. He was on cruise control early on, then gave up a walk and then a bizarre play in left center. If you didn't catch the game, I'm sure they talked about it uh, in the post with Scotty Pods around, and, and I'm sure there's uh, a replay to get you caught up. It was really strange. Uh, a ball hit out there in left center, Ben Attendee tracking, Robert tracking, but I think Robert had a beat on the ball. He's the captain out there. Uh, at center field. It looked like Robert Jr. should have made that catch. It looked like he pulled up thinking there might be a collision. He almost ran past the ball. It dropped in for the first hit for the Yankees. They ended up scoring as well, a 3-1 Sox. A Sox with nothing in the eighth in the top. A bottom eighth, that was a Kendall Graveman inning. One, two, three inning. Uh, and then top of nine, nothing for the White Sox offense. Uh, Mancata pulled up lame on a ground out. Uh, I guess stay tuned on that. Uh, labored back to the dugout. They talked about it. Uh, Benetti and Beckham did on the telecast. So we'll see what happens with Mancata there. Uh, bottom nine, it was Liam Hendricks. Uh, first opportunity to get a save since coming back. Uh, and what an atmosphere. Yankee Stadium. Uh, Josh Donaldson, of course, Josh Donaldson quickly goes yard on the first pitch he saw. So three, two White Sox and then ground out, ground out. And Hendricks got a uh, Kiner Falefa on a 0-2 count, uh, got a third ground out uh, for the save and a White Sox winner. It was tense there towards the end. Uh, but what an awesome experience for Liam Hendricks. I had a feeling after what I saw, what you all saw watching on Sunday in the 83s, uh, how he took care of business, uh, his emotion uh, on National Cancer Survivor Day. You just had a feeling he was ready. Uh, he was ready now to get back into that comfortable role. And he had it on Tuesday and he took care of business. It was shaky, 
but he took care of business in the end. Uh, Giolito's final line, uh, six innings, zero hits, zero runs, three walks, seven strikeouts, 100 pitches, 58 strikes, uh, 10 swinging. Uh, bullpen, not too shabby. Kelly, Graveman, uh, and Hendricks. Sox offense, three runs, seven hits. It was really the Sebi Zavala show. Uh, your, your ninth hitter, uh, both of the extra base hits, all three uh, ribbies. Sox uh, did not have an at-bat with a runner in scoring position, only walked once. So going back to that Pedro Grifol quote, uh, after the walk-off win against the Detroit Tigers and how important on-base percentages, how important walks are. Uh, this team has got to get better at that. You know, uh, this is, I'm still waiting for this process. He talked about it uh, back in April, you know, that it's difficult to change the mentality of hitters and and change their approach. And, and this is, is going to be an ongoing thing. Again, what was happening in the offseason is what I want to know. What was going on uh, in Arizona? It, this is like to, to try to put this in play now, unless we were being lied to that this wasn't being worked on. Uh, all the articles I read, all the stuff that the players were doing, tracking pitches, taking pitches, working on this, uh, I guess easier said than done. The results just haven't been there. This team has got to be more disciplined, disciplined at the plate. They've got to see more pitches. Uh, you, you see the results. They got away with one, I think, uh, on Tuesday. I, I need more offense. Uh, it was good to see Sebi uh, have a day. Good for him. It adds to his baseball resume. He's got a three-home run game. He's got a 15-pitch at bat, and now he's got a two-home run game in Yankee Stadium. Uh, you know, did did well behind home plate, but uh, I need more offense from the rest of this team going forward here. It, it just – you can't live like this, so – uh, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Uh, now, the last time we saw Lance Lynn, uh, Shohei Otani put one out on the Dan Ryan. Uh, so what version of Lance Lynn will show up on Wednesday? Uh, more on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Uh, bird Dogs make you look good. Uh, their stretch khaki shorts are designed to uh, fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Uh, bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing that Lululemon, uh, but fit way better. Uh, they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dog uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Uh, these are fabulous shorts. Uh, I've been wearing them often. Uh, it is getting uh, hotter here in the Chicago area, but no matter where you are, where you're listening, uh, these are the most comfortable shorts I have ever uh, worn. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB and enter promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler uh, with your order. Uh, that's birddogs.com slash locked on uh, MLB. On Wednesday, it is game two, Sox at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Lance Lynn on the mound. Lynn has a 2-2 two and two record uh, with an ERA of 4.20 and 29 strikeouts in five appearances against the Yankees in his career. Uh, has not pitched against the Yankees since 2021 and has not pitched in Yankee Stadium since 2019 when he was on the Texas Rangers. Uh, Lance Lynn did pitch for the Yankees uh, back in 2018. He started nine games, had a 4.14 uh, ERA. Uh, Lance Lynn is four and six with an ERA of 6.55, uh, 76 strikeouts and 12 appearances this season. Uh, the last time Lynn pitched, uh, May 31st against the Angels, four innings, Eight earned runs, three home runs, uh, two walks, four strikeouts. Mike Trout and Shohei Otani had a field day against Lance Lynn. So uh, looking for competitive pitches from Lance Lynn, please. That is where he has been getting hurt. Uh, that's where every pitcher usually gets hurt, especially when you go against world-class hitters. And the Sox, uh, the Yankees have got some guys that can hit. When you've got 0-2, 
uh, or even if you're trying to get ahead in the count early on, you just can't throw middle, middle stuff. It's got to be competitive. You got to look at what Giolito did. He mixed things up, lived on the corners, got guys guessing, mixed up speeds. Uh, you know, Lynn, I, I know he, he can slip with that, those, those variations that he has. And if the arm angle isn't there and he can, he will hang one. That, that has been a bugaboo. That has been a problem for him. Uh, there's got to have been adjustments since the last time he pitched. There has to be. He has to be better. Simple as that. Uh, and I'm looking for a little bit more from the uh, White Sox offense. As we record, I do not believe the Yankees uh, have named a starter. Might be a bullpen day for them, or they might be bringing somebody up uh, for A. That could be bad news for the White Sox. Again, uh, when we don't have a lot of experience to get a pitcher, uh, it can be problematic. Hopefully that changes uh, for the Sox on Wednesday. Thanks for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts. Uh, we're on Twitter, uh, locked at Lockdown Sox. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore uh, GGTB. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get any questions and comments you have for a next mailbag episode, LockdownSox at gmail.com. Uh, White Sox take on the Yankees on Wednesday in New York. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. Hey, everydayers, you know who you are. On the next episode, I will recap Lance Lynn's outing and hopefully be talking about a White Sox winner. Appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Morowski. Until next time, go Sox.